So I'm running the app. We we uh, I'm running the app right now that we did last time. This is the finished version of everything all the way up to this tutorial we're going to start today. I just want to make sure my app is working before I continue forward because it's been a week and I don't remember what I have here. So I've got uh, I've got a name and address and a type. So I'm going to type in the address at the 355 West San Fernando Street. I'll just go to, I'll just put here San. And this is going to be a sit down, and I'm going to hit save. So I have my icon, and I have my name, and I have my address in here. And uh, I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to do a takeout, and then another one for delivery. And I'm good. I'm in good shape. And as I was mentioning before, this is the alignment issue. This is because the screen is stretched. If we don't stretch the screen, it aligns correctly. That is the infamous stretching screen issue that is actually documented in this book here right above. It's been uh, reportedly fixed. The bug is in the Android system of the Android stretch columns rule. It's because the columns are stretched, the items are being centered. Let's not worry about that now. I'm running it on my 2.3 emulator. If I run it on something higher, I don't see that. I shouldn't see that. The stretching got fixed in like two, like three point something somewhere above there. But this is this is an, a 2.3 emulator, so this is going to have the problem. We're going to fix the problem, though, momentarily in the next tutorial, so that's why I'm not really going to worry about it. It's not really a problem. It's just that everything is centered here. So It's because it's stretched out. So if I didn't stretch the screen, I wouldn't have the problem. All right, so last call. Anyone want this finished app before I continue? If you're going to follow along today, we have to start from this app that's running right now. Anybody want it? Oh, that's what I was afraid of. Okay, so <laughs> let me just pause this video for a second. Okay, we're going to resume and move forward. So the um, you might get this little message on the bottom of the screen. I got it on mine. It says the framework resource parser collect references failed on class auto closable not found and yada 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 yada. That's because I'm using a, um, a higher level Android 19 uh, level API, uh, which is a 4.4 project type. Oh, well, you you probably have it. If you're copying my program, you probably have it. If not, if you take and you copy over the USB folder I just gave you a few minutes ago, and you don't have that project, or you don't have the SDK, go into the SDK manager and update your SDKs. So, okay, so moving forward. We're now going to put in a couple more features in here. So what we're going to add now is the splitting the tabs. So remember the tab controller? We're going to do a tab controller where we're going to have one whole screen to put in the restaurant names and addresses, and then another whole screen to put in the, um, I just want to make sure I was recording. OK, good. To put in the, to see the list. So we're going to move. So we're going to move over to the list view. And we're going to put. Excuse me. We're going to move the list view onto one tab, and we'll have the form onto the other tab. Um, and so we're going to follow these step-by-step -step instructions here. So we're going to rework the layout first. So we're going to remove the relative layout tag and the attributes associated with it, and we're going to add a host, to a tab host, and a tab widget in a frame layout. Uh, to the ladder. So this is the new layout here that is on page 48. To make my life easier, I'm just going to copy and paste the new layout rather than adding the new stuff. Remembering not to copy the first line. If you remember, this is for an older layout format. We don't need the XML, but let's just take a look here and I'll show you what I'm talking about. If I go into the resource folder and I click on the layout subfolder, and I click on the activity main. I see I don't have that on the top. It just starts out relative. I don't have that little line on the top. This one here has a little line, a little XML line. Don't copy that line. Oops, I don't know what happened here. Don't copy this line up here. Rather, copy everything below it. That's what I'm saying. If you have been putting that line in, that might be a source of issues, actually. And it looks like I have it scrolls over into two different pages. So, uh, so let's see. I'm going to take my relative layout out completely, and I'm going to paste this in here. 
And then underneath that, I'm going to catch this little bit that's on the next page to close out the table view, close out the tab host. So now what I've done is I have swapped out the relative layout that I had before. They had the list view on the top, and I had the name and the address and everything below it. Um, so then now I'm putting in a tab host, if you remember the tab host. Inside of the tab host, I have a linear layout, and then I have the tab widgets that are going to show up on the top. They're going to have the little buttons. I press on the button that sends to one to enter the address. The other one is to show the list of restaurants. So I have a list view still in here. And uh, if I use the same um, list view properties as I did before, we should be OK. I pressed a Command Shift F and I formatted it so it looks a little bit better. That's what I just did a few seconds ago. Um, so now I'm going to save it to make sure everything is good with it. And it is, so then I'm going to continue forward. So while you're kind of, hopefully, if you've got the new project or if you're following along, cut and paste and put this in the uh, XML file of the project that you're receiving. So now we're going to wire in the tabs. So we need to modify, we're going to modify the lunch list, what we called it restaurant. So it's a tab activity instead of a plain activity. And then uh, that teaches the tab host how to use the frame layout contents of the individual tab uh, panes. So we're going to add uh, also imports to the lunch list or the restaurant app we were creating <clears throat> to add in the tab activity and the widget tab host. And then we're going to make it extend tab activity. And then uh, so make lunch list extend tab activity. So let's just do that first. So what we're doing then is we're going over here and we're going to click on the source code directory and open up the main activity. Yes, I'm just refreshing my memory on this. The restaurant is holding our list of restaurant objects. Our main activity is the one that we're using. Now I'm just going to, because tab activity is a sub, a super, excuse me, a subclass of activity. I'm just going to put tab activity here, and then I'm going to hover my mouse over, and I'm going to import the tab activity activity. So, and I'm going to get this depreciated thing. What does it say here? We don't need activity anymore, actually. Tab activity, we're good. So I see it's depreciated in uh, 4.0. Add the suppress the depreciated into main. You can add the, depress the depreciated suppressed message if you want, or you could leave it alone. It doesn't really matter. The reason why that's here is because they've changed it. It still works. We did a project with it earlier. I don't know if I used a 4.4, which is why now I'm getting the depreciated message. It wasn't depreciated in 3 point something. So go ahead and pass that disk around once you guys have got it. Okay. <coughs> so um, we added uh, the import for the tab activity. We also want to add here another import for the tab host, or we're going to get it in a few minutes down here when we start adding the code. It's your choice. I like to put the code in, and then I add the imports to match the code. You're, it doesn't really matter which one. So we're going to obtain a 32 by uh, 32 pixel high icons for the source to use in the list for the tabs themselves. We have tab icons that we're going to use. And we're going to place it in the resource directory as list.png and restaurant.png respectively. So we got, we're going to need to put in some new icons. Uh, so we're going to have to do that in a few minutes here. And then we're going to add the following code to the end of the onCreate method. So I'm going to put the code into the onCreate method. And this <coughs> is going to prompt me to add that uh, tab host um, import as well. But I'm going to go to the bottom of the onCreate method right underneath my list adapter and I'm going to paste in this code <coughs> and it's going to obviously underline here the tab host that I'm going to need to import. So I'm going to import the tab host now and I'm going to change uh, change the format around here so I can get rid of that space that wasn't necessary and I take a look here. List also is going to need uh, List. Let's just take a look here. I have to get rid of this space here. That's not necessary as well. Oops. Let's just take a look here. I got some formatting issues and there's some pasting issues to work with. So let's just 
have a special character in here that I can't get rid of. Let's see. Pros and cons to pasting. Not such a good idea. Oh, there we go. All right, well, let's let me take a look at list here for a second to see what the problem with that might be. And restaurant, drop it. Well, okay, we don't have those two. That would be the problem. Uh, so we need to find, uh, so you should have an error still. You should have list um, that's a problem because we don't have the list icon and we don't have the restaurant icon either. So we need to do that in the next step. So those two lines are going to cause you a problem right now. So once you paste the lines in, Go ahead and add the tab host. Um, you know, by we're just going to show up underneath it here. Actually, tab host to the imports. Now we have to find a couple icons. So let's go find some icons. The instructions say we want to use a 32 pixel px high. Well, let's pick some small ones. We need a list and a restaurant. So we're going to do the same thing we sort of did with those other icons that we put in. I'm just going to bring up. Um, I'm going to bring up, hopefully I can get to something here because I see that, oh, there we go. I can get to Google. I'm going to bring up Google, and you're just going to put in here list.png. Oh, this is pretty good, actually. And click on images. and I'm just going to pick a couple ones here. This one looks pretty small, actually. It's 48. We're going to reduce it down to 36 by 36. So this one should be okay. So I'm going to save the, save the link as list.png. And I'm going to find one here that says restaurant, maybe. So let me see. I'll just put here rest. Restaurant. Oh, actually, these are good, too. So let's see. I'm going to go here. Let's just pick another one. We could probably reuse the ones we have already. Oh, I like this cup here. The cup's kind of big. This one's better. This one's smaller. Uh, so let's see. I'm going to save this guy here, too. Oh, look at that. It's even called restaurant. I'm going to make it a small, smaller case R. So I have uh, don't steal icons at home, but uh, it's a great way for playing around. We're not I'm not we're not selling this app or uh, trying to put it into the app store or anything. So I'm <coughs> reusing other people's work without giving them credit. However, that's um, just for explorative explorative purposes. Yada yada. So go into tools and uh, adjust the size of each one of these little icons. Make them 36 by 36. And they're 36 pixels by 36 pixels. Makes them a little bit smaller. They'll just show up better on the tabs. Uh, so let's see. Uh, let's adjust the size here. So that one's bigger. 36 by 36. Oops. Now, now they're real small. Anybody want these two icons? Nope. Okay. If not, you can get them when you get my new project. <laughs> so, the old project has a couple icons in it. If you want to reuse those icons, we don't have to reinvent it. So, go ahead and drag these into the resource folder. I believe I created a resource folder last time called Drawable, and I figured it wasn't working. Then I put it in Drawable H. HDPI. So, I'm just going to drag them over here into Drawable. One of them is called Restaurant. And I'm going to copy them in. The other one is called list with a lowercase l. So go ahead and I'm going to change this one actually and put a lowercase l in here. So now I have the, the two icons in here. And you should notice the error message of gone away. I should not have any more red warning signs at this point. Because I put my two icons in, I have my list and my um, restaurant icon. We put those icons in as tabs. We have tab one and tab two. So tab one is going to be our name or address or our list. Tab two is going to hold the other form. So we're really going to have two XML forms that we're going to show tab one, tab two. Where we get so far? Okay, moving right along. I say we get so far, and then I find out later we're not so good. <laughs> So let's just assume we're good. All right, so at this point, we're going to recompile and reinstall the application and try it out. We should see two tabs for the UI, and the tab should look something like this, depending upon the icons that you pick. So let's take a look here. So I'm going to rerun this app and uh, see what kind of error messages I'm going to come up with. 
Oops, uh, pick this one here. I have list. Well, I don't have any lists in here, so I do have a problem, so let me go see what's wrong. Interesting. I didn't say I have one of the tabs up, which is kind of interesting. Uh, so let's take a look here. Tab host. Well, I probably didn't change the name of the app. It's, uh, let's see. Tab 2. No, that should have worked. Details. Details tab. Current tab. Take a look here. I'm going to take another look here at my interface that's out here. Everything looks like it should be okay. <sighs> Tab host looks good. Tab rows are good. Tab row. Row table row. Well, that looks pretty good. Level 13, new app fragments instead of the class continuing to use in the sun supported version of Fragment API. Uh, I might have to grant, downgrade my app type. Let's just take a look. Try something else. Let me pause this for a second. All right, I probably should be recording this. And I paused it, and I shouldn't have. Uh, so what I just did a few minutes ago for anyone who's watching this is uh, I took, I went, clicked on restaurant. And let me do it again because I know some people probably haven't figured this out yet. Go into project, go into properties. I'm downgrading the app. It was 4.4. The tab host controller is depreciated I believe is probably causing a problem but just as a testing measure because everything should be working I'm downgrading the app down to 2.33 when I do that if you collapse the folder and then expand it back out you're going to get two error messages if you don't get error messages then anticipate them ahead of time and just delete values v11 and values v14 we don't need them they are part of the 4.4 API. So go ahead and just delete these two folders. And uh, if the redness doesn't go away, we have something here in the menu. And it doesn't like the main menu either. Let's just take a look. We're not even using the menu. So we can probably just delete the menu as well. So I'm going to delete the menu because we're not using the menu for this project. So now my little error messages have gone away. So, yes? To lower the API, do you have it installed? The list, if you go, if you click on the main name, the main folder of the app, you click on proper, uh, project, you go into properties. On the left hand side, click on Android. If you only see one or two in here, you have to install them. I have it installed from 2.0 all the way up to 4.4, which is how I'm able to click on one of these. If you don't have that list, then you go into 
uh, Android SDK Manager, which I'm bringing up momentarily here. And you'll see what's installed in the status. This is what shows up onto that menu item. So you would have to, and it's in reverse order, so this is the current one, 4 point something, 4.4. And then you'll find down here on the bottom, I'm downgrading to 2.3 because I'm running on a 2.3 emulator. And I'm using a tab host controller from a tutorial from 2.3. So my best luck of getting this to work is to depreciate the, depreciate the um, library down to what it's supposed to be which is how I'm thinking I'm going to troubleshoot this problem, or how I'm attempting to troubleshoot this problem. I still don't know if it works yet. So I'm going to find out momentarily here. So I'm closing these windows. I feel like that, um, you know, the guy who wrestles the, the... I still don't know if it's going to work. The, 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 the alligators, you know, he comes out and says, oh, we're going to attempt to attack the... Right. Yeah. So... Died. Oh, did he really die? Yeah, he well, I hope I don't die while building an Android app. But I'm going to attempt to see... Did he really? Uh, anyway, bad example. I'm going to see if this works now. <laughs> By putting my hand up the alligator's mouth, there we go, and I'm going to do a run as Android application. And I'm selecting my 3.37 emulator, and I'm having the same problem. Uh, so let's just take a look here. I'm going to run it fresh, just in case it was, uh, I just want to make sure I have the right one here. I'm going to troubleshoot this momentarily. Not looking good. All right, so I only have one tab. I'm having a problem seeing my other tab. So let me just take a look here. I have left a step out that at this point. But I'm sort of glad I download, downgraded the project, only because now I'm going to be a little bit more consistent. won't have to worry about those messages. So let me just go back for a second here and see what I missed. The good thing is I don't have one of those uh, messages where it says uninterruptible or unavoidable message. So, oh, let's take a look here. Did we do the, well, good question. Did we do the step before it? That would be another test. I'm assuming that's where I stopped on the app. Um, did we build the necessary functionality in before that step is the biggest question here. I believe we did. This was the custom controller. We had make our list a little fancy. So we built in the custom controller. We designed our row. We did that already. So that we, I think pretty good we finished this part of it. Okay, restaurant holder. We recycled it. Did we recycle it? Yeah, I think we did. I'm pretty sure we completed that last step last week. Install. All right, so let's see. Um, remove. We did that part. Oh, oh, thank you. I use this over here. Um, let's see. I'm gonna make sure that my layout's not wrong. I'm gonna put my layout back in there again. In fact, I'm going to take this top piece just in case as well, because we are we are back at the smaller API. So let's just see what happens here. I'm going to stick. Um, I'm replacing my layout because I believe my layout might be the problem. I know the code's not a problem. Um, so let's go back into the layout folder. Was the activity main activity that should have been here? So let's see. And uh, let's uh, make sure I get that small little part that was on the next page here. Not the best cut and paste job, so let's just see what happens here. Let me try it one more time now. Same response. Oh, interesting. It could be. Let's see. Hold on a second. Let's just take a look here. It 
could be that I'm referring to lunch list instead of restaurant part of the code, but let's just take a look here. I imported the two. It made lunch list extend activity. You know what, though? Let's just take a look here. Set the context view. Am I the only one that doesn't have this working, or does everybody else have this working? No? Okay, good. We'll take a few minutes here. We have to have the two tabs showing in order to continue, so let's see. Let me pause this. Okay, the mystery was solved. For those people who didn't catch it, uh, the mystery was solved, and the problem was I was not adding the second tab host. Only the first one was being added, because when I went to go cut and paste from here, for some strange reason, this line does not get selected. <laughs> Therefore, when I cut and pasted the code, it did not select this line. Long story short, it does work. We can probably put our app back to 4.4, but I'm going to leave everything alone the way it is now and just move forward. So if we can keep the volume down, we're going to continue forward. Hello. So you should have something that looks like this. The first screen when it opens up is going to be blank because you don't have any restaurants in there. But when you click on the details, you should be able to add something in. And then when you save it, and you click over to the list, it show up, should show up in the list. The functionality should be working. Can I not have to compete with everybody talking? It's okay. All right. <laughs> it's one of those days. <laughs> so we got this going on here. Now we're going to get the control on the list events themselves. <laughs> so when you click on an item in the list, and now I feel like I still got to yell here. When you click on an item in the list, people, <laughs> something's going to happen. Hello. <laughs> As I was saying, I should have more online classes. <laughs> no. Okay, so now we're going to add an import to the widget, and uh, we're going to we're going to we're going to create um, an widget adapter view. And we're going to add it to lunch list, which we're calling restaurant. So we create it with an on-click listener named on-click, uh, on-list clickner, on-list click, blah. So that when we click a restaurant item, something's going to happen. Because the app is no good just showing a list of restaurants. So when we click it, we can call one of the restaurants to make a reservation, or we can email the restaurant, or we can do something with it. So we're going to add this code here. Uh, to the project and we're gonna first add the import so I'm actually gonna follow this the way it is just so I don't have to do things backwards so go ahead and import Android widget at adapter view so on the top of my import list I'm gonna put it actually I'm just gonna add it to the top of the list now I have my adapter view put the semicolon at the end and everything should be working out there as long as I put the word import next to it there we go so now I have import widget and it's going to be underlined because I'm not using it. Yes, I know I'm not using it. I haven't added the code yet. See, that's why I don't do it that way. So anyway. And then we're going to create an adapter view on click listener and we're going to, named on click. So we're going to cut and paste this code and stick it in the main body between the opening and the closing bracket of the class that we're using this with, which is the main activity. So this appears to all have been selected. Um, so let's go ahead and add it to the class implementation. So I'm going to stick it right underneath my onCreate method. Right above the other view on click listener. Wait a minute, where did this come from? Oh, that's in my other, that's the other on click listener. So let's see what happened here. I have a little line return that happened from the paste.
Looks like I might have an extra set of brackets in here. Hold on one second. What happened here? Oh, we do have an opening and closing bracket here. Okay, I fixed all the typos from the cutting and pasting. I have basically an empty method that I'm going to populate in the next few slides. If this isn't working for you, don't worry about it. You can copy and paste it when we populate it in the next couple of uh, slides down the road. But we've added an on-click listener for the list event. So finally, we set the on-click listener on the list view in the activities in the onCreate to connect the list view to the onClick listener. So we're going to put this line in here and uh, we're going to add this one to the onCreate method. So we're going to copy this line here. So to connect the list view to the onClick listener object, let's put this, I'm going to put it on the bottom of the, uh, if I have this set correctly, I have the list indicator. Good. I'm going to stick this as the last line so I can find it. <sighs> I called it list. Okay, good. Now that's the list. 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 Adapter. This was done when uh, this was done in the previous week that we actually created the list adapter. Okay, very good. Just refreshing my memory on the code. All right, so we add the listener. Same thing we've done in the past, actually, with uh, button clicks and things like that. Ancient list listener. So we added the listener um, to the onclick listener. We have the onclick listener event here. We have to add in the code for the onclick listener to do something. Let's see if it's going to be in this tutorial or the next. Um, so now it looks like we're going to do it. We're going to update the restaurant form on clicks. So on clicks, we're going to be able to go, when you click the item in the list, it'll take you to the details so that you can update the, update the items in there. So it's just going to be a navigation that goes back and forth. We can easily make it so it calls a contact provider, or excuse me, the contact, excuse me, the call content provider so that we can actually make a call if we wanted to call a restaurant. I believe that's going to be in the next couple of steps down the road. Uh, so now we're going to control the list by each one of the clicks to do this we're going to need to add two things first we're going to have the name the address and the type variables into the data members to populate the activities in the on create menu so we have to have access to this in the on create so on the current code uh, we're going to add these as local variables in the on save listeners objects for the on click so we're going to add the following so cut and paste this we're now put filling in the body of the on click listener which they're not going to give us. Um, so they're not going to redo it. So hopefully you can get this code pasted in correctly. So instead what we got was the shell. You know, we're going to fill in the body of this with the items. So what we have is now going to be a reference to the edit text name, the edit text for the address, and then also the radio types. Because that's all that we're basically going to be able to edit, which are the fields that are in there. So put the declarations, and we're setting them to null because they're empty right now. This goes into the onClick method. The onClick method is right here on uh, on item click. Um, so let's see. Now we're going to add some of the some code after the call to the set context view in onCreate. So in the set context view, after the set context view, excuse me, in onCreate, which is way up here on the top. So set context view. We're setting it to the main window, so we're going to add now. And why did we put this? I may have put those declarations in the wrong spot, actually, and I did. I should have put them at the top. So let's move these guys up from here. If I had read ahead, I probably would have realized that. Let's stick them up here. What we really want to do is make them available to the classes and members data members for the class, so let's stick them up here, and then in the onCreate method, let's assign them values from the XML. Same thing that we've been doing before in the past. I'm going to put a little space in here. So those three de declarations, we're not putting them in the onClick, we're putting them up here at the top. 
So they're members of the main activity class. And then we're populating them here. Hopefully we've gotten this far. <coughs> and then we're going to add uh, smarts to the on click to the on list click to update the details. So this is the code we're going to stick in the on click listener. This is the part that you can actually just replace what if you didn't get it to work before, you didn't get the cut and paste to work. You can actually replace it with this entire method. See, this is I understand what I did in two different steps, but let's see what happens when I highlight this. Seems to highlight okay. So this is the on click listener. Instead of using this on click list, oh, this is wait a minute, let's just make sure it's the adapter. It is the adapter. Yep. I'm just going to replace this one and stick the completed one in here to save a couple steps so I don't have to. I don't have to uh, cut and paste the center of the code to stick it in the body of the message. So in the on click listener, <laughs> we're finding the position of the list item. It's an array index zero through how many items we have there. Getting the position of the restaurant. From the position of the restaurant here, which is right here, the formatting is a bit weird. We are going to set the name equal to name dot set text is going to be equal to r dot get name. Remember the setters and the getters we created back last week with the restaurant app, and then the address is going to be equal to the r dot get address. And then if the address is uh, equal to sit down, then we're going to change the radio buttons so that r dot sit down is selected or is checked. So where the types dot check is going to be equal to the <coughs> types dot check is going to be equal to r dot id dot sit down. Else. Or if it's equal to takeout, then it's going to be equal to, maybe I can control shift up this, there we go. It's going to be equal to, the check box is going to be checked for takeout, otherwise it's going to be checked for delivery. Hopefully yours pasted okay. We're good. So now when we click on the list items, we're going to set the data, appropriate local variables to the variables that are set for the um, restaurant object that we have selected. And now we're going to find the clicked upon restaurant via the pointer position parameter that's at our index. Now we're going to switch tabs to the on click. We're going to switch tabs to the other tab to show the details of the restaurant inserted into the restaurant. So finally we're going to switch to the details um, by adding an extra line of code to the on click method of the <coughs> on click on click listener to get host to, to get host at set current tab one. So this just changes the current tab to the one that is indexed as one, which is the second tab because the first tab was zero. At this point we should be able to recompile and run it and see a fully functioning app. Uh, so what do we see at the bottom here? Here, let me make sure I copy this one in actually. And this one is going to go into the method uh, for the on list click, on list click. <coughs> Le. Um, no, I'm going to say it goes in here. In the on item clicked, no, it's going to go in here. It's going to go in the bottom here. On the on item clicked, no, one more up. It's one right above it. That's the outer. That's the inner. This is the okay. Yeah, <laughs> you guys have to double check me today. <laughs> I handicapped. All right, so let's just take a look at the code here. This is what the finished product looks like. We've got the tab spec in there. Adapter at, oh, that's the different one. Uh, yes. 
Perfect, perfect, perfect. Let's run it and we'll see what happens. Cross our fingers. See what happens. Oh, the last line of code goes at the end of the on, on item click. If you want a cheat sheet for that person who was just talking a few minutes ago, I don't know who it was, you can cut and paste the entire contents of that file from here if you didn't get it right. Unfortunately, however, I don't know if I trust the cutting and the pasting, so copying the pasting. So let's just take a look here. Uh, let me run it. And uh, well, now when I click on the restaurant, it should take me to the form to edit it. Let's just see what happens. Crash, bang, problems. Uh, so this is one, two, or something. Takeout. Save. Ah, very good. All right, so now I can go to, how does put here, another restaurant. Because if it not, it's not good enough to just to do one. Another restaurant is going to be sit down. So this one should be one. This one should be two. Yep, there we go. Restaurant. Restaurant. Oh, no, I have three of them. Because we're not checking any indexes on them, so we don't know. We're just going to add them. Do we all have working functionality? Or something close to it? We need a few minutes to get working functionality because it moves. So, so let me pause this for a second. All right, so there, I think we're ready to move on now. Um, menus. Menus and messages. So let's see what happens with this one. I deleted, uh, remember I deleted my menus, so... I think we'll probably be creating these from scratch anyway, but let's see what happens with this project. Uh, we can always just uh, upgrade it and get the menus back probably, but it's okay. Menus and messages. So in this tutorial, we're going to add an edit text so we can rate the restaurant, or we can talk about the restaurant, save some notes about it, and we're going to put it to the details form. And we're going to add an options menu that will display notes as a toast. So when we press the options button on the phone, it'll put up a little message for us. So, Add the notes to the restaurant. So for, well, first of all, our restaurant model does not have any spot for notes. So we're going to add a string notes and uh, we're, we're going to plus we're going to associate setters and getters and resulting class. All right so let's see if I can do this correctly. I probably should type it because this is so small. But let's go back to restaurant And uh, I'm going to put a, I'm just going to type it. <laughs> String notes. Maybe I should type it either. Is equal to, there we go. Let's just see. Actually, was that what we were supposed to, maybe I'll paste it. Yep, okay, good. We're good with this. So we're going to, keep notes as well as the name and the address. So we're going to have a get name, we have a set name, get address, set address, get type, set type, get notes and set notes. So these are the only two we need here. So we're going to add the two setters and the getters. So last weekend I was doing um, iOS and I'm like, I want a property. The first thing I kept thinking about is I want to make a property out of this and then I'll synthesize it. <laughs> I think that's probably my problem today. I'm still thinking in iOS instead of Android. <laughs> it's tough going back and forth. Okay, so now I'm going to pick, oh, now i got to put my control alternate F. There we go. I don't have that in the Xcode. Actually, Xcode does have a hotkey for formatting those, yeah. All right, so now I have this dot notes is going to be equal to notes, and I'm going to take notes in. So I have my setters and my getters. Did we get that far? All I did was add the string and then add the setters and the getters to the class. This is all done in restaurant.java, which is holding on to our restaurant information. So now we're going to add the notes to the detailed form. So we're going to put another box out on the form so that the customer can, or the, the, the person can put some notes in here. And this is going to be on the detailed, on the table row. So we have another XML form, if my memory serves me correct. And I saw it earlier, so I know, I, I know it's correct. 
I'm going to go ahead and save uh, the restaurant. I'm going to close out the main activity. I'm going to go down to my layouts and I'm going to think that it's probably going to be on activity main, but let me just double check. Main. So it appears that we're just going to add this to the bottom and it's going to be a table row that's going to be added to the bottom that is going to reflect the notes that we're going to put in there. So to do this we're going to first add the following table row above the save button in the table layout. So above the save button because it's probably a relative layout and the position is going to be there. So I'm just going to take the first part of this box here look for the save button and put it above that would require me to actually know where the save button is. Is it on the bottom? It is on the bottom. So we're going to stick this opening and closing new table row. Of course I only have half of it. I don't have the rest of it yet. There's the bottom of it. just wanted to select the text but I'm getting the whole thing so there we go <laughs> radio buttons radio buttons text edit sex so now I have the edit text and it's gonna it's ID does notes and it's above the save button okay Now we're going to need to modify the lunch list activity itself, which is, we're calling it main activity, by adding another data member for the notes edit text widget defined above. And to find our edit text widget on the onCreate and add the, basically we need to add it along with the name and the address and save our records to the restaurant in the onSave and restore our notes to the edit text in the onclick listener. So we added another item. The item is going to show up down below where it says notes. So let's see how it's going to do it. Bummer. It's going to have us do it on our own. <laughs> so let's go ahead and do it. Uh, so we're going to add another data member for the notes and we'll just take this step by step. Edit text widget defined above. So Let's go back up to our data members. We're in main activity, by the way. Get out of here. Save. Shut this down. Go into main activity. So we're going to add one here. It's going to be an edit text. And if I spelled that, what is it doing here? Notes is equal to null. And then in here, we're going to say name, address, types, notes. It's going to be equal to, you know what I can do is just this here. Notes, instead of name, it's notes. <clears throat> I hope I'm not going too quickly. I added a data member. I'm extracting out the information from the XML, putting it into that data member. So adding another data member, finding our notes widget as part of the onCreate, saving our notes to the restaurants in the onSave. So going down to the onSave. Here it is. R dot set notes and I'm just going to cheat sheet it here actually now I'm really surprised that the tutorial didn't actually do it for us but that's okay I probably did and I'm just not going to see it further down the road <laughs> so, you know, the bottom is in here just cut and paste put this code in <laughs> alright set notes so the save is setting the notes and it's setting the notes to the get text uh, from notes. And last but not least, we have one more spot. We're going to restore our notes in the edit text in the on click listener. So in the on list click, oive above, 
All right, above it, the on item click listener. We're going to set notes to set text. Text to r dot um, get notes. And I need another bracket in there. And Hello. Hello. Okay. Did we all follow that? <clears throat> okay. You guys are probably faster than me. So at this point, we can recompile and install it and see our notes show up. Let's see what happens now. Let's just make sure mine's working. Still not persistently saving this data. Eventually, we're going to save the data if we ever make it past this point. So this is going to be um, uh, subways. Subways. Go down the street. Down the street. And it's takeout. Notes are on the bottom here. I'm going to say um, five dollar lunch <laughs> special. Monday is turkey <laughs> and ham. Okay, that sounds good to me. Save it in my list. If I click on the list, I see, oh, look, there it is. And I see my notes in here. So, another sit down. Another note. Another note. Subways. Do we get our notes? We're good? Okay. So now if you want to, you can actually take this a couple of steps further. If you want to add anything you want, to put your own stuff in there. So you might use this as an opportunity to expand it if you wanted to. Um, I don't know what else you'd put on there, seriously. But uh, now it should store the notes, and we should be fine. Now we're going to find the options menu, and the options menu is going to show the notes for us, or it's going to show something. So what we're going to do now is in the menu, we're going to create options.xml. I believe I removed mine, so I might actually have to put it back. So now we need to create an options menu and rearrange it for display when the user clicks on the menu button. So the menu itself will be defined in a small piece of XML code. Answer the following as lunch. Well, it's going to be resource menu option .xml. Um, So let's see. We have the menu directory, and mine is empty. I think I removed it. So that's no problem. I'll just put it back. So I can go file, new, and this is going to be uh, mm, XML. Uh, Android XML file, that sounds good to me. And resource menu, resource type is a menu. And I'm going to call the menu, I think it's called option. Let's just make a look. Let's just refresh my memory. Options. Option, singular. Option. Did I spell that right? I think I did. So now, and make sure that, I probably did that too quickly, but make sure the type was set to menu because then you get the menu format. If I look at the XML equivalence to it, it looks like it says menu and that's what makes a menu opening and closing start tag for your XML. So now if I come on here, I can just, like famous last words, I can just copy and paste except for not getting the bottom of the menu. So I'm going to have to type menu down here on the bottom. So I'm just actually going to re actually I'm going to leave that menu down there on the bottom <laughs> and just paste this in here because I wasn't able to get the menu that was on the bottom. So in our menu, oh, wrong one. Where did my preview go? Here it is. The code relies upon an icon stored in drawable toast.png. Find something suitable. Oh, not another one. She is preferably 32. Oh, you know what? I'm just going to set it to one of my existing ones. 
because I already have a bunch of icons in there. I'm just going to pick one and have it set to that. Because what it's going to do is going to pull up a menu item, and the minor item is going to have a icon on it. And then the text is going to say on the menu, it's going to say raise toast. It's basically going to show you a little picture with a word on it, uh, with an option. So this one is going to be toast, but I'm going to change toast to something that I have already. And I have, which one do I want? I have, I can't remember what my icons look like, but I'm just going to pick one. I don't know what one is, but we'll see what happens in a few minutes. All right. So let's see. So we have to change the name of that icon to something that you already have or drop another one in there, call it toast if you want. So then to arrange the menu to be displayed, add the following line of code to the main activity. And here it is here. Um, it's probably already in our code, but let's just take a look. I may have pulled it out. If not, I'm going to replace what I have in there or add it in. So you need to define the imports as well for the view and for the menu inflator. This will happen for us automatically. Um, so I'm going to save my menu here. It's my options menu and it seems to work okay. So now I'm going to go back up to the main activity, double click on it. And in here, I'm going to see if I have the menu already. The current template gives you the menu. I may have pulled it out and it looks like I did, which is great actually. Because then now I can just put this in fresh. I'm going to put it in right above the on create so that I can find it. It doesn't really matter where you put the things in here. And if you hover your mouse over, you have to do these two imports. One is the menu. And the other one is menu inflator. You may not necessarily have to do either one if you left your on create options in there. But if you have the template I just gave you, I pulled it out earlier on in the code. So now you should be able to run it and you press the options menu. And now you're going to see something on my emulator, which is the reason why it's there. It's like this little round button thing that simulates an options menu. So I'm going to run it. And see this little... If you have my emulator, you have this little thing that shows up. Oops, it's a big icon. <laughs> this is the feature we added. Uh, so I probably would want to change. It's the menu. It's it's a it's a widget that calls the functionality for the uh, buttons that are supposed to be on the hardware that's missing from the emulator because it's an emulator screen. So that would be equivalent to the menu button. If you're using a built-in emulator, you actually have a button that says menu on a little panel that's to the right of the screen. So mine doesn't have the panel, which is why that little button's there. So I can see my menu is actually working, but my menu isn't going to do anything because I don't have any activity on there. So um, hopefully you've gotten that far. You guys are good. Anyone need any extra time to fix their menu? Extra time? Okay, so let me pause this for a second. Okay, so let's move on. Uh, we have the options menu working for us. Oh, look at this. We have a, mine wouldn't show the toast underneath it because my icon was too big. Uh, but uh, you should see raised toast underneath it if your icon is smaller and your options menu is done correctly. Oh, we still have to do some functionality for this. When we click, when we click on the menu option, we're going to have something happen. So finally, we need to get control when the user selects the raised toast menu option. So the problem is, uh, the problem is that to do this, we need to know the restaurant to show. Because uh, what we're going to do is raise toast, where we're going to show a restaurant. <coughs> so so far, we have not been holding on to specific restaurants except for when we need them and we populate the details. So now we need to know our current restaurants. So defined in our one visible in the details form and then one who's not visible and not saved anywhere on the form. So to make all this work we're going to do the following. We're going to add another data member restaurant called current because we want to keep track of the currently selected restaurant and then hold on to that one and then we're going to initialize it to null. So Create another data member restaurant current. So it's going to be a restaurant data type. And uh, let's just see real quick here. 
I just want to move ahead a little bit. No, it is in here. So restaurant current and have it equal to null. So let's go, we'll do it step by step, but know that you can actually have the final code down here if you want it. Uh, so at the top of uh, here, this is the main activity. Uh, let's take a look here. We didn't actually do a re we did the restaurant in the um, in the save button. Okay, so underneath the edit text, new notes, add another restaurant. I mean, add a, add a restaurant current. Have it equal to null. So we're going to keep track of which one's current. And let me go back up here actually and just follow along. In the on save. And on the on click, on list click, rather than declaring the local restaurant variables, we're going to use the current to hold on to the restaurant that we're saving in the on save and clicking on in the on click. And we'll need to change all the references to the old R variable to the current one in the two objects themselves. We have to add imports for the menu item and for the menu widget toast, because we're going to set up a toast message. And then we're going to add the following implementation to the on options item selected. So unfortunately we have a kind of a little bit of a to-do list here. So in the on save and in the on click, we're going to change that implementation. So I'm going to go back over here to here so I can cut and paste it. On create, on create, on save. We're going to use current now instead of instead of R. Eh. I think at this point it would be easier to cut and paste the whole thing out. Unless you want to manually do it. If you want to manually do it, we have to, uh, in the on save and in the on click list, rather than declaring the local variables, we're going to use current to hold on to it. So in order to do that, we have to change all the references from R variable to current variable. I don't know how many there are. Let's just take a look. Maybe, maybe it's reasonable just to change it. So let's take a look here. Not too many of them. Current, current, current. Well, let me, let me do it manually. Hold on one second. I want to make sure I'm not replacing R with that. Just take a look at the final code for a second. See, I would just leave it at R. But R is going to be the last one. Ah, uh, we'll do the cheat sheet method. I'll just cut and paste the whole thing. And the other thing too is uh, we're adding. The other thing I'm just going to copy, just in essence, to save myself having to go through and edit the whole thing to change all the R's to current. I'm just going to cut and paste the whole code. So in order to do that, then. Um, I'm going to skip this part as well because this is also in the completed code that I'm going to paste over. So I'll just talk about the code, what were the changes we're doing. We're changing the reference to that new current. We're going to keep the R for the current one that we're putting in, but current version of the R is going to keep track of which ones we have currently selected. So when we do the on select, it makes it current is equal to the restaurant that we selected from the list. And then the on the options item selected, uh, we change it so on the item, once we click on or press on the menu option that comes up, it's going to take and say, well, if there's no restaurant selected, which means current, we didn't select one from the list and didn't set current, then it's going to come up and say no restaurant selected. Otherwise, it's going to give us the name of the restaurant that was selected. Um, and we'll make a toast message to do that. Um, and it's going to get the notes, actually, from the restaurant, it looks like. So in essence, what I'm going to do is kind of cheat it a little bit. Let's see what happens. I have a strange feeling this is going to cause more trouble. But uh, let's see how much of this gets copied. Oh, see, get host spec does not get copied. 
That is the most bizarre thing. Um, so wait a minute, Ben. I'll put it in manually. So I'm going to change my code rather than it going through and changing all those steps. Very dangerous, but here goes. Very dangerous. Here we go. Oh, at least I made a backup copy of it. <laughs> Gone with the wind. <gasps> Whoa. Maybe that wasn't such a good idea. I have to add. It's called restaurant. I have to change it because I called mine restaurant. <sighs> Maybe I should have just made the changes. Main activity. Excuse me. Edit text. Hold on one second. And main activity. <sighs> There's always an edit undo text. Edit undo typing. I'm gonna do it. This is gonna be more problemsome. There we go. I'm back. <laughs> I'm going to do things the long way because the short way is not going to be too short for me. <laughs> so I put the, uh, the restaurant current item in here. So now I have to go down into the on create menu and update that. Or excuse me, the, uh, let me go back up here and make, it, make note of the changes here. So on the on save and the on click, rather than declaring the local restaurant variables, we're going to use the current to hold the restaurant we're saving in the on save. So it's really just the on list click and the other one that's changing. On save. So let me do on save first. I can copy the on save actually really easily. So this is what I'm going to do here. I'm going to replace the on-click listener for the on-save to the this version of it that uses current, so I don't have to retype that one, which is just this method right here. Optionally, you don't necessarily have to have, oh, that's, that sounds terrible, I was going to say optionally, you don't necessarily have to have the options menu working. <laughs> but um, if we want to see it work, this is kind of um, secondary. It's not going to be, it's not going to be crucial to the next step, so. All right, so I replace the on-click listener, the on-save and on-click, on-list click. I didn't do on-list click. Uh to use current instead of the restaurant and the on save. I think I did that actually. Or have clicked on and on click on list click. I'll need to change reference to. Okay, good. So then add the following uh, implementation of the on click listener to on. So we will. I'll replace this one with the on items on items selected. Stick that one underneath the here. And put in menu item and then put in the toast import. All right, and then uh, let's just take a look here. <coughs> To see what else, I'm just going to visually look at it then. Uh, we had the current. The 
Test is in here. We added that menu. On click listener. On save, I changed that. Could change the, let's see, the list adapter. As soon as I get done making these changes, I'll tell you what I'm making so you can do it manually as well. Which is right now. Alright, so here's what I did. Just so you guys have a idea of what needs to be changed. If you don't want to change it, don't worry about it. I could just go ahead and give you my completed project in a few minutes here. Or you can cut and paste all that code and reformat it and fix it. Uh, which I thought was too slow. So you added the reference. Then you need to add the options on on I on options items selected you can cut and paste this one out of the complete project this is the um the event that occurs when an item is selected from the options menu I put it underneath the on create so it would be in the same same kind of vicinity so I could find it easily and then uh, there's nothing to nothing to change in the on create menu but rather over here on the on click I added the current is going to be equal to the model that get position from current so that we can set the current to the position of the item. And then in the on click listener on save, when you save it, it saves the current. So if you save an item or if you select an item from the list, it updates the current so that when you select the options menu, it will show the notes for the current. Um, I believe I've caught all the spots where that needed to be changed. If not, it's an insignificant feature. We don't necessarily have to have it working correctly for us, but let's just see if it's working. Because the next part is going to save it. Uh, hmm, let's see. We're going to set it in the background. Hmm, let's we'll see what happens in the next part. So I'm going to go ahead and run it and see what happens when I click on my options menu. And get ready to copy this for you guys in a second. <laughs> Actually, have to add one in here. I'll put subways back in here again. Just take out notes. This is a good deal. <laughs> and it works. So, if you want a working copy of this, this is working. If you don't want to go through and find all that stuff, I'll just take a few minutes now and give this to you so we can move forward with the next part, and you guys will have a working copy, so let me pause this. For those people who want the restaurant app and don't have it already, I just stuck it out there on my website. So if you go to bhecker.com forward slash ap slash restaurant, restaurant dot zip, you should be able to download it. <laughs> so you don't have to wait for the USB key. So you guys on the left hand side, right hand side of the road, Right, side, right, right hand side of the classroom over here. Just go to www.bhacker.com forward slash ap slash restaurant dot zip. It's the restaurant to date. So it's our, the one we have so far that's working. Which is actually not a bad version of it. Because right now it's pretty stable. So. Uh, so you don't have to wait for that USB key to go around. You can get it from right here. So get it, download it, save it to your desktop, open it up, put it in if you don't have it already, and let's start saving some data. So I'm going to close this out. Now I'm going to see how far we get with this. We might not be able to finish it because I do have a 4.30 meeting today. So I will be jetting out of here pretty quickly at 4.30. Plus you guys are probably getting pretty tired of this restaurant stuff already, but let's see what happens. Um, so we're going to go in on the book here all the way up to tutorial number 11 on page 93. I'm skipping all the way up to page 93, the restaurant store, uh, where we're going to 
take what we have. So we're going to deviate a little bit from the tutorial only because the tutorial's got a lot of stuff in it we don't really need to do. We've already done most of this stuff already and the purpose of this was to review features anyway. Well, the tutorial does follow the same thing that we did before with the restaurant helper. So we're going to create a new file because uh, the purpose right now is we're going to create an, an SQLite database because we want our, to keep our restaurants. So now this is what makes the app actually nice because now we can keep a list of stuff. And it's persistent. Every time we shut down the, uh, the app, we bring it back up. We got our restaurants that we saved in there from the last time. And then we'll use this one to add even more stuff to it next week. So we're going to take a wrapper here. The best way is to wrap out the database features in what's called an SQL Open Helper. So we're going to create a new, uh, a new class called restauranthelper.java. And we're going to enter the following code into that class. So go ahead and open up your Eclipse. Click on your source code folder on your project here. And go into File, New, and then we're going to add in a class. So File, New, Class. And the name of the class, oh man, I just had it out there a second ago. It was called, and I'm going to copy and paste it see what happens here, Restaurant Helper. And uh, let's see, Restaurant Helper is going to extend SQLite Online Helper, but let's not worry about that. We could just simply put Restaurant Helper in here. So call your class Restaurant Helper and press Finish. So now I have Restaurant Helper in here. If you open it up, it looks like this. I didn't extend or do anything to it. Instead, we're going to pull the Restaurant Helper code out of here. I'm going to just start down here with the class and just pull the class out. And then I'll put the, um, I'll put the imports in in a few minutes. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work with it this way first. So we're going to create a class called Restaurant Helper that's going to extend the SQLite Open Helper. So take, I'm taking this public class Restaurant Helper out of here and I'm going to put in this code. Don't worry about the red stuff yet. And I hover my mouse over here and say import the SQLite Open Helper and I'm going to say that to add unimplemented methods. I'm going to actually say to add the unimplemented methods here because we're going to add them later on the down the road. So because we are extending SQLite Open Helper, we have these methods that we need to import, excuse me, that we need to implement. So I'm going to Im import the context. So I have context in here. And uh, let's see, we'll leave these guys alone here. I'm going to get rid of going to get rid of these unimplemented methods. I, I decided not. I'm going to decide not to put those in. Instead, let's just go back over here for a second. I did put it in here. I did have on create and on upgrade. Try pasting this in one more time so I can get everything in here that I want. All right, so I have mine cut and pasted. It took me a couple tries to get it in there correctly, but I cut and pasted the code from the restaurant helper in the example. Manually imported this. I believe that I probably am short on a couple of imports. Um, I can go ahead and put them in now if I wanted to, but I could just leave it alone as well. I think I'll just leave it alone actually at this point. Okay, so this says that our database name is going to be called lunchlist.db, and lunchlist.db is right here. If we want to change the name of it, I'm just going to leave it alone, lunchlist. Um, you can call it restaurant, you can call it anything you want, but whatever we call it here, we have to call it further down the road. And to make my life easier because I started out calling it something else, I'll just call it a lunch list. It's no big deal. Um, all right, so uh, the project will still be uh, compiled completely cleanly after adding this class. 
uh, we don't necessarily have to test it right now, but if you wanted to, you could test it. We just added a class to it. It's not going to really affect anything else that we're doing. So we need to manage our database schema. So on the onCreate method and on the onUpgrade, so remember when we upgrade the app, we install it again, we have to recreate, we have to drop the database tables and recreate them every time we change the apps on an upgrade. Um, if you remember, we did that before. Um, we don't necessarily have to put it in, but to be complete, we probably should. We're going to add some code to create the database. If you're familiar with SQL, this will look very familiar to you. So to do this, we're going to add an import for the Android database cursor. And we're going to use the following implementation in the onCreate method. So I'm going to copy this import and stick it at the top here. And I'm going to stick it on the bottom underneath my SQLite imports. And what I'm putting in here is a, an import, call it import, Android database cursor. And then in my onCreate menu, here is, a, where is my onCreate? Uh, onCreate. Actually, I could just take this whole thing out. Replace the onCreate that's right here on create SQLI database because we are extending SQL SQLite open helper our on create method takes on a database that we're going to create on the on create we're going to create table restaurants and uh, we're going to have an ID this is going to be a primary key it's going to be an auto increment for us. We're going to have the name, we're going to have an address, we're going to have a type, and we're going to have notes. That's good. We have all those items. <laughs> Otherwise, we would have to add that or change this. I believe we got our app to a point where we're pretty consistent, even though we didn't do any of those other tutorials. So here we simply are executing an SQL statement to create the restaurant. Now, your onCreate method, though, it does have this parameter, so make sure you do use this format for your onCreate. Uh, this class is a, it's not an activity, it's not extending activity, but it's extending SQLite on uh, Open Helper, which is a slightly different on create. We're also going to update the on upgrade method, and the on upgrade method is, uh, oh, we're not going to do it in this one. There's nothing to do. We really need to do it now. Since the method will not be executed until we have at least two schema versions, well, we don't have any updates, so this tutorial is skipping it, which is actually probably not a bad idea, seeing how we don't. We only have one version of this app. If we were to create another version of this app on an upgrade when the user downloaded a newer version of the app, we could drop the tables and then recreate them to match it, uh, to match any changes, or we could simply just refresh the tables to the original sets again. Uh, but we're not going to leave it alone. I'm just going to leave it alone. And... Uh, and here I'm just going to leave it just as is. I'm not going to touch it. There's really no need to touch it. This third step, we don't have the extraneous code from the lunch list because we didn't put this in. The other pieces of the code that you can put in optionally if you'd like is going to be the bar. So there's a status bar, but the status bar doesn't really do anything because it doesn't take more than a couple minutes. If we have a, you know, to switch between the two windows, so when you switch from the details to the other one, the other one's to the details, so I'm not going to go back into this tutorial in the further chapters, but there's like a little yellow status bar that goes across the top. And I believe it'll put something also in for the options menu that I'm going to skip, some more features for stuff to happen. Um, not significant stuff, not something. And then we had the on pause, on resume, on create, on options selected. There were a few, we skipped about four or five tutorials, so there's a few different changes. And in this tutorial, I was telling you just to remove it. <laughs> so we didn't put it in, so we don't have to remove it. We're not going to remove anything. We didn't put the is active in the progress bar in there. We didn't put the request for the window feature in the on create, so we don't have to worry about any of this. Start work or done work. We didn't do the threads either, so we don't have to worry about this. So now we're going to get access to the helper that we put in here. So we're going to use the restaurant helper as our bridge to the database. So lunch list will have a restaurant helper, which we have, to retrieve the existing restaurants and add new ones to it. So in order to do this, uh, we need to open and close access to it from lunch list, which is called restaurant for us. So first we're going to create the restaurant data helper named helper. So we're going to add to the, in the onCreate menu, onCreate um, method, excuse me, 
after the call to set the context, you're going to initialize the helper. So we added the helper class here. In the onCreate method, so I'm going to close the helper class actually and save it. In main activity, in the onCreate method, which is further down here, somewhere towards the top, I'm going to stick it right here underneath the. Uh, no, I'm going to stick it right up here on the top actually. I'm going to put some spaces down so I remember where I stick it. I'm going to stick it here and it's going to go here and say, well, we don't have a helper. Uh, because I didn't set the helper yet. So let's go back here for a second. And I need to make a reference to helper, which is going to be skipped. Well, we can add the reference in ourselves. I'm surprised I didn't. Maybe I was supposed to put it in up here. And I was. Uh, let's see. No? Let me just check one set. I, I skipped through this, so let me just make sure I didn't leave out the reference they wanted me to put in here. I think it is here that we were supposed to do it. So up here on the top, we will add a reference. And the reference is going to be called helper. And it is a restaurant helper. So right underneath here, I'm going to put restaurant helper. If I spell it correctly, restaurant helper. And this is going to be called helper. So I put my reference up here at the top and then now my error has gone away because I added the reference here. The instructions did have me do it, I just read through it. First you want to create a restaurant helper data member named helper. We just did that. And then in the onCreate set the helper to this. So this is the onCreate line we're adding and then we added our reference up here. So we made it a data member of the class so it's visible. So now we're going to implement the on destroy. So on a destroy, it's going to close the database connection. On a destroy is when our app is finished. If we don't close the database connection, we create a memory leak. So we have stuff that's open, references that are being used that are not necessarily going to be um, going to be wasteful. Basically, going to be wasteful. So go ahead and copy this method here, and we're going to add it. I'm going to add it to the bottom bottom of the of the class implementation down here way at the bottom and I'm gonna reformat it so now I have the on destroy so super dot on destroy is called and then helper dot close so it's part of the life cycle of the app on the on, on create on destroy on pause on resume so if you remember from earlier in the course so besides chaining the superclass, it's going to close the database connection for us. Now we're going to save a restaurant to the database. So we're going to do that by adding a line of code. And uh, the line of code we're going to add is going to be to the restaurant, uh, to insert on the restaurant helper. So we're going to add a method. So we're going to replace our restaurant object model and its associated array with the database and a cursor representing the roster of the restaurant. So we'll be adding some more logic to the restaurant helper to add in the process. Um, I believe this is where we're going to get in trouble if I try to rush it. So here's what I'm going to do. We're going to save and run our restaurant app. Make sure we're still in good shape. And somebody has to tell me we're on step five. Somebody write this down. <laughs> Um, otherwise, I'm going to have to fish around and find out. Um, here, actually, I can probably just write a note to myself when we're done. Right now, we should be able to save our project. Let's just make sure we're still running first. We should be still in good shape. So let's just check things out. We have the pieces in order. Yes, we are good. Uh, Yes, we are good. So what we've done is we've set the stage. 
I've got the pieces in order. I've got everything kind of, I got the restaurant, I got the database helper here. I've got the database created. We created our instance inside of the main activity. Next week, what we're going to do is we're going to change the save. So when we save it, it's going to commit it to the database. And then when we load the details, and I'm looking at the clock going, I'm not going to have enough time to do it uh, all in one sitting. When we click on the details tag, we're going to query the database, pull the restaurants out, and populate the list, which means we have to change the list view because we're not. We're going to pull it out of the database, create restaurant objects from the contents of the database, populate it into the list. So we're going to change the list adapter around a little bit. We're going to change the restaurant logic only on the save. But I'd rather do all of it in one sitting. So that will be the cliffhanger for this week. Next week, if you want to, if you want to do it, you can continue it on your own. Otherwise, next week we're going to finish this one. Once we get done with the database, we're pretty much done with this this part of the tutorial. Outside of saving the restaurants to the database, there's really nothing left of significant value. What we're going to do after we get done with the database next week is we're going to move on to the ed. It's called the more advanced. I'm trying to find out where it is here. It's, uh, there's a, it switches gear to a different theme, so we'll be building an entirely different app that will be using more of the frameworks and more of uh, other features of Android that we haven't seen yet as kind of a concluding more, and this I'd call an extreme advanced. Uh, we did the preferences already. Hold on one second. It's, I'm trying to find the page number for it. It's further down the road here. Here we go, part two. Uh, network applications and then part three has got more advanced. So it's, it's, uh, it takes a couple steps up and it shows you from, I mean, this is really just a beginning course, but this takes you like where to go into the future in terms of expanding your knowledge base a little bit. I think there's a Twitter connection on this, which is, takes two seconds, but it's using third party frameworks and using some of the, uh, you know, kind of posting something to external data sources using external data. There's actually a tutorial in here on JSON that we're going to cover. Um, opening up a jar file as one of the examples here. Um, so if you want to thumb ahead between now and next week, if you want to read through this, probably not a bad idea because we're going to go through it at the speed of light. Let me just take a look. Uh, this, is a, this is the Twitter one, listening to friends. It's actually a, tw a fake Twitter. It's not using the real Twitter API. So I just want to kind of revisit our, ca our calendar here real quick. Um, so this is Thanksgiving week, and uh, so IT is going to be closed on Thursday and Friday, if you haven't figured that out already. Um, we have class today because we're not close enough to the holiday, which is good, actually, because we need time. Uh, next week will be December 2nd, and then we have December 9th. We have two more weeks left, and then we don't have our final till the 16th. So I think our final is on the 16th, if I'm not mistaken. I'm also going to make it available on the 18th. So if you don't like the 16th, you could take it on the 18th. On the times on the 18th will be probably from 11 to 3, but I haven't decided yet. So catch me when we get a little closer. So when we come back from the Thanksgiving, I mean, we don't really get a break, but let's pretend like we get a break. When we come back from Thanksgiving <laughs> next week, <laughs> we'll finish up the databases. I'm just trying to give you the roadmap here. We'll finish up the databases, start in with the advanced stuff. On the 9th, we'll finish up the advanced stuff. And then on the 16th, we'll have our test, our final exam. Then we'll be done, actually. And I'm not going to spend an entire class meeting going over the review stuff. Instead, all the stuff we're doing with this restaurant app is part of everything we've done. This is actually everything we've done in the course so far. We've done all of this stuff already. We're just doing it one more time through and building a real app out of it. So you should hopefully walk away with a restaurant app that uses a database. You can change the theme of that to an address book or to whatever it is you want to do with it. And you can actually extend the modification on it if you understand the underlying workings of it. Outside of that, that's the basic kind of introductory from a first level course kind of app that you should expect at this level. On the exam, there will be no programming questions. It's concept oriented. And it'll be multiple choice. You don't have to write Java source code. We didn't teach you Java source code in this class. It's not a Java programming syntax. course. No syntax. But there'll be concepts like what does the onCreate method do? Uh, life cycle questions. I'll review a little bit 
I'll give you some subject areas a little bit, uh, probably on the second and the ninth, as I because I'm putting the exam together over this Thanksgiving break. So long story short, I'll have a little bit of hints for you that in terms of specific questions. If you can do the restaurant app that we're doing, you can ace the ace the. You know nothing on source code, nothing on Java programming. So it's all in concepts. So you know. Uh, what does the Android platform support? There's the concept of the content provider, intents, what an intent is, um, the concept of using an SQL-like database, um, list views, options menus, um, on-click listeners. If you think about it, there's really a lot of, there's a huge subject area. It's a bit overwhelming, but just know that it's very high level. If you've built an app before, you'll ace the exam. There's no problem. If you've never built it, you don't know, you haven't been showing up to class, you have no idea what's going on, it's hard to recognize the terminology. It's hard to see it. So you'll have a little bit more difficulty answering the questions. But for the most part, it's a fairly simple exam. I know it's worth like 40% of your grade, but it's not like extremely hard. It's very reasonable in my opinion. And it's going to be like, it's all multiple choice questions with no source code and no Java programming. So it's all Android questions, Android platform related questions, you know, like, in fact, one time I even asked a question and I had people fail this question or miss this question. And I thought it was just like, how in the world could you miss this question? And it says, Android applications are built in and then, and then you know, are built in, are built by using, and it's A, Java and XML. B, C++, and HTML. D, <laughs> Objective-C, and, you know, I don't know. The correct answer is Java and XML. <laughs> or, you know, the IDE is Eclipse or Xcode. Eclipse. <laughs> um, apps don't have a life cycle. Uh, or, you know, or the life cycle includes on pause, on resume, on create, on destroy, on something, right? That's A. B. Underneath, over above, you know, I don't know, something else. You know, just A, B, C, just garbage in there. If you can if you can identify on create, you'll go, I'm not gonna go something weird in there that's not part of it. It's not gonna be like on create on end on destroy. On create on pause on destroy. On create, it's not gonna be that difficult. You will have a series of on create or on something. And a series of non ons. <laughs> so you'll see, oh, on great. Or an intent is used to, to, to pass control between two different activities. True or false? You know? Or, you know, an intent is used to garbage collect the, the JVM. What? Like, no, not, it's not used for that. But the Android manifest, you know, is a uh, holds on to the permissions. For the Android app, yes, yes. <laughs> or A holds on to permissions to Android app. B is used to garbage collect. C is used for something else. That's all those wrong answers, whatever. But you know, to know what the manifest does, and I'll kind of review a little bit. Knowing that the interfaces are done in XML, we have an options menu. We have uh, you know different. It, I, I can't really go through the entire SDK right now, but. I'm trying to give you an understanding of the level. It's very high level. It's very concept theory based. You can get through without knowing anything about Java. Nothing about Java. So, even though the whole platform is written in Java. <laughs> Questions, comments, or concerns? I have to make sure I know where I stopped here. Does someone know the page? Actually, what's the page number? 129. 129? Okay, I'll write that down. Step five. I know, but that's the problem. If I leave it on this page and then I close it, it opens back up in the same location. 129, I hear. Do I hear 129? Oh, what is your preference? Preferences. Yeah, we can set preferences actually too. We'll do. We'll do the preferences too. There's only a couple more cool stuff to do to this, and then we're pretty much done with this app. Okay. See you next time. Enjoy your Thanksgiving.